All right, summer movie season is back. And by summer, I mean November. It's a, it's a very weird time to put out a trailer like this. So as you guys definitely know by now, two trailers came out this weekend. And by this weekend, I'm including today. Again, time. How does that work? And I am positive at this point that you guys have probably seen Jeremy John's video, the Flick Picks video. I don't know if Chris did one. I don't know. A lot of people doing videos on trailers. I promise you, I've not seen any of them. I refrain from getting other people's opinions so I can keep this fresh and on focus and exactly what I think without other people telling me that I'm stupid. But first off, we're going to talk about the Spider-Man trailer because, I mean, I'm... Just gotta get that one out of the way. Let's be real here, there's been like seven Spider-Man movies at this point, at least it, it feels like that. There has not been a Justice League movie yet, so there's varying levels of hype here. So, I don't know, just gotta get the Spider-Man one out of the way first. So we open the trailer getting Spider-Man's new suits, or I guess the same suit that he had in Civil War. It's got that cool thing where like, he puts it on and like it tightens up automatically. It's like the opposite of like tearaway pants. Oh, that seems, that seems like a cool thing to have. <laughs> it's technology I'm sure Nike will have in like six years. And then we see Tony Stark just telling him, hey, look, could just can you keep it on the local level we don't really want you as an Avenger right now which is really funny because like back when the Avengers first came out there was this online joke that oh yeah Spider-Man can't be in the Avengers because they they don't like him and not because they're in separate universes like Spider-Man is the Aquaman of the group like hey guys can I join uh we're busy right now and they just take off and now even when Spider-Man is in the same universe yeah we got the <laughs> He's still not cool enough to be in the Avengers turns out the Avengers are even harder to get into than the inner circle one day guys one day. Then we get some some small neat stuff. We get more of the best friend character who I actually think is pretty cool. It just, it just seems like he's gonna be like a really cool, relatable character. I don't know. And he's asking him all this stuff about his powers. And he's like, oh, can you summon an army of spiders? And of course that's supposed to be like the throwaway, like, oh, hilarious, because he's not that crazy. But in this trailer, we get him using like a spider drone and then he's got like a web bomb or something, which I, I didn't even know that was a thing. I thought that was like a made up like video game thing. Like on Spider-Man 2 for the PlayStation, you're like, oh yeah, level up. Hey, here's this cool thing that doesn't actually exist, but is cool in the game. Press circle to have spider bombs blow up. And then in here, if you get that thing where like the webbing actually does blow up. So I don't know how that works. Cool shot for the trailer though. That's, that's, that's neat. And we get more of Michael Keaton as the vulture. And I, I remember hearing from people who know more about comic books that the vulture is supposed to be this creepy, ugly old man. And I noticed that Michael Keaton probably should moisturize a little bit more. I, I really hope that's makeup. I hope that that is makeup and I'm not just making fun of a really brilliant older actor. I'm, I'm I'm sorry, man. You, I really hope that's makeup. Well, we get kind of his thing. We get how he's kind of this down on his luck guy. Again, super vague, which a trailer should. It already gives away arguably too much in this one, so I'm glad they didn't spoil his whole motivation. But it's something vaguely to do with something against the one percent, and like he wants to help his family. It's probably gonna end up being like Sandman, where he's like, "Oh, I've got a dying daughter. I gotta rob some banks or something." But I mean, it'd be cool to get back to having relatable villains. I mean. You miss those? You miss those guys? You miss uh, having villains that weren't just snarling, angry bad guys? I don't know. That was neat. That was cool when Spider-Man had those. And then we get this scene that I thought was a cool ending shot on the other trailer, and then we get the entire scene that's gonna happen in the movie. Don't get me wrong, it's cool for character development, cool for setting up that angle of the story, that whole plot line of, oh, Iron Man is kind of making him learn the same lesson that he had to learn, which was you're more than the suits and all that, and learn responsibility and taking care of the little things, but like, that would've been cool to see in the movie. Like, I don't know. I feel like with trailers, I don't know, just give a little bit of the plot and then like show a little bit of action, just tease some jokes here and there. I feel like trailers these days are just showing too much. And maybe it's just that I'm getting older and noticing the patterns of movies more, but I'm just thinking like, okay, so a movie is this long and in the trailer they've showed this number of action scenes. Have they showed literally everything that they could have just in slight little slivers? I don't know. It was just getting older and more jaded. But like I said, Spider Drone, Peter Parker on the Washington Monument, so that whole stay in the neighborhood thing clearly doesn't really happen. Again, New York and Washington DC, they're not that close, so clearly there's some travel involved. And then we get that final shot, Peter Parker steering that jet plane. That's also a neat way to end up, but again, I feel like we've seen too much variety within the fight scenes in these trailers to where I'm like, are you literally showing all of your cards right now, just in little pieces? Because, oh man, I would have liked to have gone to Kong Skull Island not knowing literally every single frame where Kong was on screen. That would have been nice. Like, oh, here's a little teaser of what's to come instead of, oh, here's literally everything. <laughs> I really hope this isn't spoiling too much. I hope there's more twists and turns to this movie. 
Or if not, just some more jokes. Because again, like I said, that comic relief guy, he seems pretty cool. It's the sixth solo Spider-Man movie in existence. I really don't need too much to be different. But hey, Sony isn't entirely in holding the reins on this one. So it's probably gonna be some product placement, but I mean, It'll probably be a decent movie. So anyway, moving on from that, let's get into the let's get into the main feature here. We got our first look at the Justice League last year after Comic Con when like everybody was panicking, like sh okay, shoot, we got to show them something promising now to, to make, make people, people still have belief in the DC Cinematic Universe. And so they showed a kind of a quickly chopped together trailer that was that was basically just revolving around like one or two scenes. A lot of people didn't really like it that much. I loved it. I don't think it had a lighter tone. I just think throwing in some more jokes, throwing in some more clever moments, adding some humanity to these characters just feels right. I don't feel like it's turning the DCEU into Marvel. I feel like people just, they make jokes. When people are trying to relate to each other, when people are trying to break the tension, when people are trying to warm up to people, they make jokes. They say little things by each other. They poke fun at each other. It's a normal human thing. Marvel didn't trademark humanity. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Now we got trailer number two, and I, for the most part, really liked it. So we start off this trailer and we get uh, Batman and Horseback, which at first I'm like, oh, you're just you're shoehorning that in so you can get a good trailer shot. All right, whatever, dude. But then he comes over the horizon and it's like, oh, there's the village where Aquaman's gonna turn up. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, all right, so this fits into the story nicely. Okay, that's... That's cool. It's not like the nightmare scenario, nightmare with a K, ha ha ha, in Batman v Superman where it's like, oh, let's just literally have him be a, have a vision of the future so we can put Batman in the apocalypse. And show him holding up pistols and snapping necks and wearing trench coats and whatever. This, this is a cool shot that fits into the story. It's a good job, Zack Snyder. Let's just let's keep that on track. And then we hear Wonder Woman come in and say, hey, okay, so that threat, yeah, that threat from the other world, that's, that's coming in pretty soon. We better take care of that. Let's... Seriously, where are all those people that you were going to assemble? Then we get that list introduction, which has me a little nervous. Because again, Suicide Squad did that, and that did not work very well. I'm hoping that Warner Brothers has learned, and they're like, okay, let's not make the entire first half of our tra of our movie into a trailer for itself. I hope that that some of the movie is spent going out, actually finding these people, meeting these people, and then this scene takes place at the point where Wonder Woman's like, okay, we gotta bring them together now. Just give me a quick summary of these people, and then we'll go out and get them. So first we got Aquaman, he still is doing some cool stuff. He's He looks awesome. That's great. Not really sure what I think about him as a character, because then at the very end of the movie, after the big title drop, we get him being like, oh, you're a bat? Oh, I dig it. Like, I don't I don't know how I feel about that, about him being just an angry bro. We'll see. Well, I might I might like him. Jason Momoa has the ability to pull off a character like this, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. And then we get Cyborg. Oh my gosh. It's, it's good to see more of Cyborg, because I really like this character. I don't know about him in this movie, but just in general, I like the character of Cyborg, because I loved Teen Titans growing up. It's still great. Teen Titans Go can just go die, but Teen Titans was awesome. And he's such a cool character and just, I don't know, I hope this movie does him justice. My, I, from that, from the only line that he has in this trailer, his voice sounds pretty good. Like I'm, I'm digging what the actor is bringing to him. He feels a little small though. And that's not on the actor. That's just the machine parts on him feel way too slim for what his character is. I don't know, man. It's just like, he's supposed to be this big, husky, powerful character to where like, oh, I could shoot you in the face with my plasma thing, or I could just punch you and your face would explode. Also, if he does doesn't say booyah at some point in this movie, we riot. Just just letting you know. I don't care if you have to ADR it in at some point randomly, he better say booyah. That's just, that's just that. Also, there's a point or like in the middle part of the trailer where all the action stuff is going down and then all of a sudden this like part of his face flips down and he turns into like an Iron Man thing and shoots up into the sky and like, oh, don't turn him into Rhodey, please, please. It's all, it's bad enough that we're getting more like Avengers comparisons now. Like, please do not turn Cyborg into Rhodey. I haven't listened to this week's episode of the Intertube yet. I probably will after I record this. They're definitely gonna be talking about this trailer because they'd like to talk about movies. I swear, if Kevin says, oh yeah, look, now they've got Rhodey, now they've got Iron Man's black sidekick going on, just just know that if that is said, that if they, if that is actually, if it's Josh or Kevin or whoever says it on the that episode, just know somewhere out there in the world, I'm screaming. That's just, I'm I'm not even joking. He is not Rhodey. He is not really like any other character we've seen before. I hope they do him justice. He is a kid who lo loses the majority of his body in the early part of his life after he was an athlete. He is a Football player, which also that's a weird shot to throw in the trailer. I hope they're. I hope it's because they felt the weird urge to do that for character development, and not because they're scraping the bottom of the barrel for footage. But he was an athlete early on. He lost a 
big majority of his body, but he's still able to crack jokes and still able to look at the positive side of life. And that is how you write a tragic character. You don't have them moping, you don't have them feeling sorry for themselves all the time. You write a likable character where just terrible stuff happens to them and you can see where they they should feel sad, they should feel broken, but they're never quite, they're never more heartbroken than the audience is for them, if that makes sense. I don't know if I fr phrased that in the right way, but I, I hope you get what I mean. Like, like, they're not right, they don't have to like milk how sad everything is. Like, it's just apparent and they're trying to move on and do the right thing in spite of it. So I don't know, Cyborg has the potential to be a fantastic character if they handle him right. And then we get the Flash again, and we get that scene that we saw from the Comic-Con teaser, and uh, I don't know if it's new footage, but they just get a wider shot of the little, his own little cave that Batman invades, that Batman just kind of pops up in. It's kind of funny because the Flash is like, look, I don't know who you're looking for, but I'm not him. And literally right over here is the Flash costume. And you just see it out of the corner of the room. It's just, it's just funny because it's just like, oh, oh really? Oh really? You're not who I'm looking for with this right over here? It'd be funny if that wasn't, if, it'd be funny if Batman showed up and then like, he was just like, oh yeah, no, that's not me. And then he pushes a button and he's like, oh yeah, really? And then just that suit pops up. I don't know, I, I hope they handled that scene well, because that could either be hilarious or it could go really badly as far as plot holes and all that. It could be sloppy or it could be funny. It could go either way at this point. And early on in this trailer, we get a shot of someone having their house broken into and it's a parademon. Parademon? Oh, I only see one demon. <laughs> That's the type of comedy you can expect on this channel. Ugh. But I really couldn't figure out who this character was for a while. I had to watch the trailer seven times until I saw that little trophy in the corner and like, oh yeah, sports trophy. Okay, this is Cyborg's house. That must be Cyborg's dad. I vaguely remember seeing him in that clip in Batman v Superman. But the first time watching through, I'm like, okay, is that the CIA? Is that like the CIA Homeland Security guy from Man of Steel? Is that like this universe's version of Lucius Fox? I don't know, is that is that Gus Fring? Is that, is, did the Breaking Bad universe just suddenly merge into this? I don't know, the lighting is really bad, so I couldn't see it initially. But that does raise some more questions, like, okay, does he have the mother box or whatever the MacGuffin thing is that these aliens want? Or is that just like a tech thing that he has? Like, What's, why is the parademon there? What's with the box? What's in the box? And then we get, and then Batman gets another really cool one-liner. He's like, hey, what's your superpower? Oh, I'm rich. I, I don't get why people say that Batman can't be funny because he's been funny and clever and witty throughout his history. Again, did we already forget about, what's the difference between you and me? I'm not wearing hockey pads. Like that's, it's funny. It's in Batman's character to occasionally crack a joke. You didn't think I'd come here without reinforcements, did you? Wish I'd thought of that. Oh wait, I did. At this point, he probably is. Sorry guys, people make jokes sometimes. They're not always good, but people like to break up tension, they like to break the ice, they like to crack jokes with each other. That's just, that's how human beings interact. And we get some more awesome Batman stuff where he's like, he's getting shot at by these parademons and he drops in and he's like, all right, okay, my turn. He's like, oh, surprise, I've been hiding Optimus Prime in my basement. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. I just, just casually gonna pull that out now. Would've thought you would've led with that when you're fighting Superman, but I guess you've been working on some stuff in the following months. <laughs> just love imagining him and Alfred just out in the garage one day. It's like, oh yeah, we're gonna, we're just building this. I also get some cool Wonder Woman stuff. Again, a lot of cool shots. Zack Snyder knows how to make really cool trailer shots. It's connecting them to a story that's the more difficult part, but again, the action looks really good in this. And we get that one half a second shot of what I, what looks like a bunch, like millions of Amazonians, like a bunch of Wonder Woman's people attacking parademons and like, okay, is that a flashback or is that the finale of the movie? Because if it's the finale of the movie, that is amazing. If it's a flashback, I'm gonna be very disappointed. So again, we will see. Also, we got the first look at Jim Gordon played by, I, I can't, I can't think of his name. Uh, J. Jonah Jameson, I, whose real name I will have below. He's a very prominent actor. I should know his name. I just, I keep thinking of J. Jonah Jameson. But just seeing the mustache and seeing his general, like his voice, I'm like, oh, was this supposed to be played by Sam Elliott? We got J. Jonah Jameson playing Sam Elliott, playing Jim Gordon. I don't know, that's, that's interesting. The mustache is a little more exaggerated than it has been in the past, so I don't know. Also, what's up with all those images of him working out? Like, is he gonna, like, do some karate in this movie. But his interaction with Batman is not, oh, hey, you murdered a bunch of people. It's like, oh, hey, glad to see you getting along with others. So again, we are at a crossroads here. Either 
It's because we resolved the issue of Batman killing people and there's a justification for it or Batman's set is, like, going on the right path. Or Jim Gordon also doesn't care that Batman's killing people. So we, we either go in the good direction or the truly terrible direction. We'll see. <laughs> so there's another podcast I listen to called The Weekly Planet. Bunch of, bunch of Aussies talking about movies. You know, Mr. Sunday Movies, and you got this guy named Mason. Mason uh, had this idea for what they should do in Justice League to kind of make up for Batman killing people. You just show, like, one quick scene, like, near the near the end or near the beginning of Lex Luthor still in jail, and then someone who very clearly is dead, so one of his assistants who was once dead, is walking through the hallways and is about to set him free, and then Batman just jumps down, just snaps this person's neck, and as he does it, sparks fly out, little gears pop out, and you're like, oh, okay, so these people that I'm working for Lex Luthor, they're all robots, which is not completely out of the question in the universe where we have Cyborg, we have Star Labs, we have all that. It would also mean that Lex Luthor has been kind of ruling over that whole thing with Cyborg and his dad and that whole company, or maybe just has a competing company full of robots. I don't know, it just makes sense. It would also completely make up for Batman having killed all those people that work for Lex Luthor because... Hey, they're all robots, except for that one guy that had blood when he got punched in the face. But we'll just say the rated R version isn't canon. Let's just say that. He died because his robot thing got smashed, not because there's blood coming out of the back of his head. Shut up, everybody. I don't know, it, it's not a surefire, perfect way to resolve that, but it is a way to resolve that and kind of bring things back to, okay, Batman doesn't kill people. He will absolutely murder the heck out of these bugs, but he, he doesn't kill people. Also, something in this trailer that wasn't shown that I'm glad is not shown, they did not show the villain yet. I've heard that it's going that the villain of this movie is going to be Stefan Wolf, which is a character I've never heard of before, but I mean apparently he's related to Darkseid or something. Like, I don't know. So I don't know what he's about, I don't know what his powers are. This is a completely new introduction. Most people watching this movie have not heard of him, so I mean if you don't do the character right, that's I I'm not gonna care. As long as you do him right right for this movie. As long as he is a villain th uh, that works as a, a foil to our heroes. As long as he is a good movie villain, we won't care if he matches up with the comic version. And I hope we don't see him in the trailers. I hope we have a couple of things that are saved for the movie. I, I don't know how much is going to be saved because we've got all this time until November and this is not going to be the last trailer. There's going to be probably two more. I don't know if I'm going to watch the other ones because I don't want to have this spoiled for me. But here's the thing. Like, with all these team-up movies, like we all have the heroes fighting the one villain 1v1 and then eventually just they get beat down by the sheer force and everyone just flying around and using their superpowers. We are living in a post Doctor Strange world but when you have an ending a pure like okay the villain the hero has to outsmart the villain the hero has to do has to sacrifice himself the hero has to do something outside of just use his powers in order to defeat the villain i think that is the standard and we need to have that in this movie instead of like okay this person's gonna punch loki this person's gonna punch loki this person's gonna punch loki and then this person's got a laser beam ultron this per person's got a laser beam ultron this person's gonna punch ultron i don't know guys i just feel like not only should we and also not only should we have this villain get outsmarted or out charactered or outclassed like they all need to fight him at once like this villain should be such a threat to where he can take on all of these heroes at once i can't believe i'm saying this guys but star wars the phantom menace did something better than the avengers i know it feels weird saying it too they also did it better than Revenge of the Sith or Attack of the Clones, but having the Darth Maul fight, where you have a villain taking on two people at once, it felt natural in The Phantom Menace. He has a weapon designed to take on multiple people. Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon had this chemistry when they were fighting, like, okay, I go high, you go low. We're actually going to attack him. We're not, like, going to intentionally try and hit our lightsabers with him. It felt like a real, genuine fight with two people versus one person. That's hard to do with, uh... I guess it would be four versus one, but you need to figure that out. Because we can't just keep... Because if we're going to keep having multiple heroes against one villain, you kind of need to figure that out. I don't know, minor tangent there. Again, it, it's really, it really is feast or famine with this trailer. It could be great or it could be terrible. It's a great trailer and I love everything that's in it. It gets me pumped. I'm so psyched for this movie, but I've been burned so many times before. It's where I'm like, okay, that could be great, but I could also see how that could parlay into a terrible movie. I was hyped up for Batman v Superman and I, it took me months to fully accept the fact that that is not a good movie. As you can see with that movie review where I gave it a 7 out of 10. It's just, eh. I can't keep making excuses for it. Suicide Squad, that trailer, oh my gosh, that's one of the best trailers of the year. The the Queen one, the one with uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. 
And then I saw the movie, and I just sat there for, like, a couple seconds after the movie's over, like, did I actually watch a movie? Like, I should have enjoyed that. What's going on here? That took me months to fully accept that was not a good movie either. Even though it had a bunch of really great elements, it was not a good movie. It didn't come together. Also, speaking of come together, oh my gosh, the music in this trailer, that's perfect. Pristine. Pristine. I love it. It just, it's the, it's the perfect, it blended so well with the action. Anyway, back on, back on topic here. I can see where things could go horribly wrong, and that, and I can also see where things could go really well. So, going into this movie, I'm gonna have to keep an open mind, because it really is going to be feast or famine with this movie. It's either gonna be good, terrible, or a mixture of good and terrible. There's no okay to be found in this. But if they can pull it off, this is the movie that will change the game as far as superhero blockbusters. I, I just made a video, I made a video earlier talking about how the genre is dying, but this could reinvigorate stuff and kind of, in addition to all the smaller stuff, coming back it feels like we get some variety outside of Marvel and outside of that whole brand of filmmaking you just show that you can have a movie that's dark without it being grim or without you know a movie be gritty without it being boring or sad or any of those things you can have both you can have a fun dark visually interesting movie and I hope that we get that in Justice League I don't know guys all of these this is 100% all my thoughts I did not watch any other reviews or any other videos on this. I vaguely heard that Philip DeFranco liked this, but other than that, I had no other outside opinions coming into this. It's just purely what I thought of it. What are your thoughts? Comment your original, totally not echoed, your original thoughts down below. I really appreciate your feedback and whatever you guys think, because you guys have some interesting opinions too. So, there's that. And until next time, guys, God bless, and stay saucy. Stay saucy.